going to throw some drop catches. Um, they're basically little plates. I raise the centre up and then the idea behind them is that you put them under pieces in the kiln where the glaze might run, like on my coffee mug for today. Um, and they sit on the centre, they're raised up. In theory, I mean this is this catch is a bit bigger than ideal for this, but if there's a gap between as you know the centre bit's smaller than the outside of the mug, the drips can actually hang past the end without sticking and they're much easier to sand back afterwards. Um, and then obviously you protect your kiln shelves. And if you put everything on one of these, then your kiln shelves will always stay safe. Um, you can reuse them repeatedly. This one's obviously caught a few drips and it can go back in so long as there's clearance. So for example, if it was a slightly bigger mug, it would fit. If it was a flatter thing, maybe not. Um, cross section is something like that. Uh, you don't have to throw the lip and actually if you've got very runny great glazes that's worth having but for the most part the trips will actually catch like that so I'm beginning to move away from throwing a lip on them at all because the glaze isn't going to run off the edge so it's basically just smear the clay up to a flat plate open the centre and pull outwards to raise that bit for it to sit on and then they go in every firing use the same clay that you throw in normally I use my um, spare scraps so I don't need to I don't use brand new clay on it but I don't need to do such a good job of wedging because these don't need to be that neat so take a ball of clay and you can go as low as sort of like 50 grams for small shot glasses or something like that, it's worth having tiny ones because obviously you can only put as many things on a shelf as you can fit drip catchers, so if you've got massive drip catchers and tiny pieces um, they will waste a lot of space between the drip catchers, you want to kind of fit the, the catcher to the piece um, unlike crystalline glazes where it has to be a perfect match, these just need to be the right sort of general size so this was maybe two, three hundred grams of clay and that will make a, a fairly large catcher. Um, if you want to do like fruit bowls you might need a bit more than that but for the most part I would say a hundred grams is quite nice for most sizes of mugs and actually sometimes a bit less than that can be good. So smear the clay out wet and then just you just want to pull the center out. And what that does is it raises with more clay out. It gives a rim for the piece to sit on. And that's pretty much it. Smooth. You can use kiln wash on this part if you want to get the drips off. I don't bother because they're throwaway pieces. You can use them until they're kind of too covered in drips to be of any use or they crack which will happen after you know, repeated firings. You could use a higher temperature clay. If you fire to cone 6 like I do, if you did a cone 10 porcelain uh, it would probably survive up the repeated uses better, but um, certainly not essential. Damage one way or another, so it's good to just use kind of cheap clay. You don't want to use a dark clay if you use white clay for the pieces because it will colour it, but um, the other way around is fine. Just the iron or the um, And then I don't wire them off. These are wooden bats, they can stay on there until they're dry enough to just pop off and they don't need any finishing beyond that. I mean it's worth making sure the edges are fairly rounded at this stage because otherwise you'll have sharp bits and you know it's just not nice to use them but from a functionality point of view it doesn't make any difference. So that's, that's that and I will just sit here and churn out another batch of them and then 
That'll be me done for probably another six months or so.